Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Claude Landry. I work at the MSC, specifically at the CMC, or Canadian Meteorological Center, in uh, the Development Division. And first, I, I must say that this project was originally uh, initiated by Pierre Bourgoin a few years ago. But since Pierre uh, has left uh, for another division, and uh, this project, the mesoscale analysis, uh, was left more or less uh, at the evaluation stage. So uh, my section, uh, the meteorological system section, uh, for which I work, has the mandate now to pursue this work uh, up to the operational uh, production stage. First, you know, we have to evaluate and improve it, but we're, we, we wish to bring this system to the production stage. And, uh, but so we're not, you know, all that familiar to, this, to all the subtlety of this system, but however, uh, I will give you an overview of the basic principle of this system, and hopefully that in a few months uh, we will be able to give you more detail and with uh, objective verification to support the result. So these are the, the uh, different uh, items, uh, the overview, so a little bit of introduction, the context, and uh, I'll give you a quick description of the prototype and we'll talk about the future development. So uh, in terms of the introduction, well, there is a need for a gridded now casting prediction system to support our program, different programs with public marine and aviation and also air quality. And these, there is a list here of uh, different requirements that we would like to have for this, uh, well, you know, gridded now casting system. So ingest real-time observation and now casting weather element on a grid. Get some, you know, produce some deterministic and probabilistic weather element. Have the optimum use of all types of observation. Also having a high resolution grid, temporal and also a geographical grid. Also have having a reliable system and totally automated and using some interpolation technique as well as extrapolation technique using as input high resolution model and also having a weighted variable approach uh, as a function of projection time. So the context currently is that MSC operates a point grid now casting system called integrated now casting uh, system. And uh, this system actually support the uh, scribe system, which is the forecast production tool used uh, to prepare public marine and air quality forecasts. So this system provides weather element only for the public program and for its and it's a point forecasting system. It's not a it's not on a grid. And at the same time, uh, MSC is currently working on planning the next generation forecast system, and uh, which we call we're, we're calling it CONOPS or concept of operation. And uh, a gridded weather element approach is also uh, envisioned for this new system. So. Uh, this mesoscale analysis and now casting prototype that was uh, built by uh, Pierre Bourguin is quite promising. So, uh, and also this was produced by Pierre in order to compensate some other statistical technique as like TAF tool or PUP tool, uh, since the event-based extrapolation technique is, was, was quite better in, in, in many cases. So this is the uh, scribe system, just to give you an overview and how the current uh, now casting system also integrate uh, into this uh, forecast production system. So essentially, at one end, or at the beginning, as input, we have model data and all our other all other type of data, and we produce a matrix of all these of our selection of a selection of a uh, selection of uh, data. We send this to the different storm prediction center, and which produce weather element out of this. And the forecaster can uh, change these weather elements through the interface. And after that, these weather weather element goes to the production system, and also to uh, weather office, and you know, and for different users. The uh, now casting uh, currently, as it works, it's a point forecasting system. And it uses observation, such as METAR, radar, and lightning, and uh, produce a very short range, uh, use very short range forecast system, as well as NWP and statistical model, as you must, 
And there's a set of rules that produce a sequence of weather elements that are co coherent uh, between each other. And these weather elements are sent to uh, the uh, scribe system. So the forecaster can use it uh, interactively to update his forecast. But again, this is a point forecast system, and it's not on a grid. So how this uh, system works, essentially this prototype, essentially observation from surface station are converted into a, an, an analysis using the grid, uh, the Krigging interpolation method. And the grid actually is, is, is uh, 50 kilometer. So we, have, we extract hourly surface observation over all Canada and U.S., well, not all U.S., <coughs> and Western Greenland, and for different uh, weather elements that are listed here. And we built analysis at this uh, grid land, which is 50 kilometer, using the Krigging method. And um, there's a consistency check also produced with a rule-based module. And the result, essentially, is a first-guess mesoscale analysis uh, done for precipitation type or occurrence, convection, and cloud cover. Once this is produced, uh, this preliminary, preliminary analysis is uh, will be used will be improved by using some other source of data for the precipitation precipitation type analysis. Uh, we will use radar data, satellite, and NWP. Convection analysis will use Canadian Lightning Detector and also NWP model. And for cloud cover analysis, we will use uh, mid-level cloud analysis producing by the GO satellite data. So, you know, this is give you a, the, 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 the different step, you know, in, in the process of producing this mesoscale analysis. So third, there's a sequence to respect, you know. So cloud cover is done first, precipitation occurrences, and type and precipitation type are done in this order. The convective analysis is uh, in, is independent of this of this uh, sequence. And the final analysis will be extrapolated by a forward scheme using the NWP field, uh, either at five either five percent of the 500 millibar or 100 percent of the 700 millibar field wind field. So just to give you a an overview, oh, uh, slow. Okay, there it is. So the cloud cover essentially for the coast area and over the ocean, we take an average of the, these different uh, variables for satellite RDPS, which is the regional um, deterministic probabilist forecast system or prediction system. Sorry, I changed the slide. And the trial, what we call the trial field here is the first hour uh, forecast by the uh, mesoscale uh, analysis system. And also the interpolation field done by Krigging. And over the continent, basically the same thing, except there's more weight on the interpolation, uh, two times the uh, interpolation uh, field, interpolated field. So this is give you a, a quick overview of this is the resulting field, and uh, which is the cloud cover analysis. And so we have the Krigging, the trial field, satellite, and also the uh, uh, NWP model that contribute to produce this final field of cloud field, cloud analysis. Then uh, precipitation occurrence produced by combining the following information. So model data, uh, radar composite, integrated cloud analysis, interpolation precipitation occurrence, and one hour forecast of precipitation occurrence, which is the trial field. Also, there's a weight that is given to each value, and the summation of the weighted value, if it exceeds a certain threshold of precipitation, will be diagnosed at this point. So this, again, it's a quick overview of the different input uh, to produce the precipitation occurrence analysis. The other, this is also a, a 
more recent uh, image where you can see the uh, initial precipitation analysis in color and also the uh, NWP uh, precipitation field in blue. So you can see that's the based on observation that you know sometimes the model is not producing uh, is producing precipitation while it, while it's not really observed. And the resulting occurrence field will look like this. So where you have these uh, blue uh, area are essentially precipitation, where there's precipitation occurrence. Uh, Notice that we're not using all the observation, yeah, although the observation are produced here over the state, the uh, resulting occurrence not uh, you know, perfect because we're basically focusing on the uh, Canadian area. So the precipitation type also is produced by combining the following information, so the interpolated type analysis, again with using the Krigging, final precipitation occurrence analysis, uh, the uh, NWP analysis, and the diagnosis temperature. So if the precipitation occurrence is diagnosed at one point, the type uh, associates with will be selected from the first non-nil uh, of the following. So result of the Krigging analysis at that point, near the nearby analysis, the model diagnosis, and if, there, if it will be rain, if temperature is above uh, 3 degrees Celsius, other, otherwise it will be snow, and also, and again, it will be nil if there's nothing. And these are the four level of type. So we basically diagnose no precip, liquid, solid, and freezing. Oh, sorry for the fault here. So here the um, resulting field based on the different input, so temperature, model, and the uh, interpolation type and occurrence. This is a winter case. Color are is slightly different here, but essentially we have snow here and uh, in this sort of uh, pink color, it's more uh, liquid type. And the last field that we're looking at is convection, so uh, produced by combining the following information, interpolation analysis of convection using, again, the uh, Krigging interpolation method, the lightning data, and also the lifting index from the uh, RDPS. And we're producing four level of convection, so stable, obviously, cumulus, TCU, ACC level, and also the thunderstorm level with CP. So this is a, a type of output that we get where you have the cumulus type, the showery type, and also the more intense convection in red here. Then when, once we've got these fields, uh, we think we have uh, a good representation of what, acts, what is actually happening over a large area and that, well, at the synoptic scale, and uh, we will extrapolate using the NW wind field to a vector precipitation type convection and cloud cover. And uh, currently, the version that we're running, the prototype that we're running, use the 50% uh, of the 500 millibar RDPS wind. So this is a sort of an, an example where you have a one hour forecast. The blue line represents the uh, occurrence of uh, the observed precipitation and the blue area is the same area but it was pushed uh, forward uh, of, of one hour. Okay. And I have another example here where uh, it's three hours, it's a three hour forecast. You can see the area has moved. And you also, uh, we have put also at the same time, T plus 3, the convective area. So probably by the intersection method, you can put 
you can uh, combine these two uh, area, convection and precipitation, in order to find where the precipitation will be more convective. This is an example uh, where uh, you have the, the gray shade uh, are clouds. The precipitation type and convection also are also uh, combined. This is the uh, freezing rain event that went through Toronto and Hamilton uh, on the, the 11th of April. And uh, so you can see this, this is was the analysis at that time, and if we push forward with the extrapolation, well, you will see this area moving uh, hour per hour uh, over Lake uh, Ontario, as well with, as well as the snow and the, um, the precipitation liquid, and also this is a more this is a showery type or type liquid precipitation. So, uh, as you can see, it's pretty rough. The, the, the resolution is still at uh, not that high, so that's why we don't have much detail here. But we're we're looking to imp we're one of the projects that we have is to improve the uh, the resolution, increase the resolution. So you can see here again moving. Um, Pierre Bourguin did a little bit of verification uh, while he was uh, doing this project. And he uh, focused on two uh, periods, a warm season and a cold season. And uh, the occurrence, he was verifying the occurrence of precipitation. Um, so using the extrapolation, mesoscale analysis extrapolation system, the prototype, using a sampling uh, method to perform a probability of precipitation. Same approach for the uh, NWP. And also using the uh, statistical forecast system, POP tool, uh, which system is only based on the uh, use as input only the current METAR. So these are the three scores that Pierre uh, did uh, compute, and uh, the result. You can see here that uh, the in blue we have the uh, the original GEM model or the RDPS. In black, it's the extrapolation technique and the statistical pop tool uh, forecast in red. So, in all uh, the different score for the different all the different score, you can see that the extrapolation uh, is better, and uh, also in the for the cold season. But in the warm season, you can see that the crossing uh, time is about four between four and five hours. So that means uh, Extrapolation seems to be better than the model and also better than the uh, statistical uh, pop tool forecast system. The next slide shows the um, the cold season. So uh, we can see here the model seems to be a little bit more performant. So the crossing, uh, instead of being a little bit after four, it's a little bit after or around three three hours after the uh, observation time. So this uh, gives you a quick overview of uh, some performance uh, based on verification, but there's certainly more to do. And uh, so the final slide, what? we have we have a little buzz again. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stop you right there for a second. Okay. Continue. Okay, back to the future. Uh, okay, finalize the operational ability of the system. So uh, there's already some work that was done, but there is still a little bit to do. To make, just to make sure that the system will be easily implemented whenever uh, it's ready. Uh, we want to increase the resolution, at least to the uh, regional model or the RDPS, which is 10 kilometer. And uh, eventually, it will go down to uh, higher than that to the LAM, probably, resolution, which is 2.5. Uh, we also want to evaluate uh, 
the possible replacement of the Kriging method with a more uh, efficient method, uh, which is an optimal interpolation scheme that we call MIST, which is uh, for in French, uh, Moteur d'Interpolation Statistique, or Statistical Interpolation Engine. And uh, we want also to verify uh, forecasts produced with the extrapolation technique and also compare it with the, uh, the interior and now casting system that we're running actually with, with Scribe. Uh, we, wa we want also to integrate the mesoscale analysis and extrapolation into our INCS uh, Scribe system. And another thing that we'd like to do is to compare the extrapolation uh, of the different field using the uh, motion vector from Maple, which is the uh, Miguel algorithm for precipitation Lagrangian inspection, and um, compare it with the winds that we're using with the uh, Canadian original model, which is either at uh, 700 millibar or 50% of the winds at uh, uh, 500 millibar. Um, we want also maybe to define the best way to select the wind field uh, for the extrapolation and maybe uh, explore the uh, possibility of using differential extrapolation approach based on more than one level. So we maybe we could uh, use wind at the low level, mid, or high level. So is there any question? <laughs> Hi, Claude. It's Dave Sills. It's yeah. Toronto. Hi, Dave. Uh, yeah, good talk. Uh, just a question. You mentioned that the system is uh, to be totally automated, and I guess you probably could guess this question was coming from me, but uh, is, if there's a need for the forecaster modification in a point-based system like Scribe, why don't you see the same need for a grid-based system? Uh, I think there's no uh, incompatibility with that. It's just that the system... Uh, need to integrate all this information and produce an output which is uh, used, you know, I mean, it's, it's an automated system that can uh, feed uh, the production forecast system, which could be the next, the next generation one. So again, the forecaster, if, if let's say with this system we produce MET object, uh, well, the MET object eventually could be modified by the forecaster. But I don't see any problem, you know, uh, for uh, integrating this, even if it's fully automated, to integrate this system into a forecast production system, which would be gridded based. Does that answer your question? Okay, so so you're thinking this might be able to be used to generate first guess med objects? Is that it what you're could, saying? Yeah, it could be. Okay. It could Great. be. And the, the the difference here is just that, uh, as you as you probably notice, it's it's uh, we're focusing on uh, we're not focusing only on uh, high impact weather or summer severe weather. Uh, we're trying to provide all the weather element uh, for all kinds of events, but uh, not sure how it will be able to handle right now the uh, high impact. There's more sophisticated system for that. That's the one that you're working on, certainly. But sure. I mean, uh, so that so that's why uh, at at this, at this point uh, we're still you know focusing on the, the large scale and uh, all all type of weather element. All type okay. Of weather. And and looking at high impact weather will also probably change the verification results too. I'm sure. But. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Hi, uh, Claude. It's uh, Dove Benson here. Yep. Does the system work better uh, in areas where the density of observations is higher? Uh, I would think yes. Uh, although I'm not, you know, we we're looking at the system just recently, uh, but obviously since the uh, where the density of the observation are higher, uh, obviously the analysis will be better. I think, and uh, so that's why it will certainly be uh, more reliable in area where there is more uh, more observation. Uh, I, I Claude, a very good presentation. Uh, I'm Pierre Bourgoin, and just to, yeah. add to to your answer is that the problem the problem uh, the system goes well when there are a lot of uh, surface observation, 
satellite data, radar data, lightning data. As you go up north, uh, where surface observations are very sparse, there is no uh, geostationary satellite data, there is no radar, there is no lightning. Of course, the system will tend to produce uh, an analysis which is less uh, representative and okay. more spotty. Thank you. Thank you. Other question? Yes, uh, Francois in Montreal. Uh, is that is that why you're using the the regional model to fill like for your analysis at first and uh, during the initialization period with the radar and satellite picture and uh, and all these actual data? Uh, yeah, yes. yes, we're using the uh, our DPS, the regional uh, NWP Canadian model. So that fills the gaps where there's no yeah. uh, actual yeah. data. Okay. Uh, uh, ju just to add to that comment, the idea was to develop a system which was not directly fed by NWP models. So in, in, in that sense, if we have enough surface observation and tele teledetection data, we don't need the model. So we use the model to complement over oceans over northern areas, et cetera. So we, we wanted to have something, a solution which is totally, or as much as possible, independent from the NWP model. Thanks. OK, no question? OK, thank you very much. Thank you, Claude.